example, but it's one more important step to making good cuts. There's two things we need to consider here. First, these cutting tips are designed to operate with a certain amount of gas flow that helps keep the tip from overheating. The amount of flow also determines the size of the flame. Second, we want the correct relationship between the amount of oxygen and acetylene. We'll adjust the gases to a neutral flame where both the oxygen and acetylene are totally consumed by the flame. If you're not familiar with adjusting the torch, a simple way is to open the main acetylene valve about an eighth of a turn and light it. Slowly add acetylene until the flame just about quits producing the soot or smoke. Also, notice how the flame has started to feather out on the end. This should be pretty close to the right amount of gas flow and flame size. Once the acetylene is adjusted, slowly open the oxygen valve on the torch head and the preheat flames will appear. Keep adding oxygen slowly until the long flame comes together with the preheat flames to form sharp cones. This is a neutral flame and how we want the torch adjusted. A neutral flame produces carbon dioxide that purges air away from the heated metal and keeps it from oxidizing or burning until you push the oxygen cutting jet lever. If you don't add enough oxygen, the preheat flames won't sharpen up. This is called a reducing flame and there's an excess of acetylene that will slow down the cut and mess up the oxygen cutting jet. If you add too much oxygen, you get an oxidizing flame. Notice how the preheat flames thin out and the increased rushing noise of the torch. While this flame is a little hotter, the excess oxygen will burn the surface of the metal and may actually slow down the progress of the cut. I'll reduce the oxygen a little. When you have a neutral flame, push the oxygen cutting jet lever all the way. If the preheat flames change, you can readjust the oxygen a little to sharpen them up. To shut the torch off, close the acetylene first, then the oxygen. This way the oxygen snuffs out the flame. If you do it backwards, you may get fire going back down the torch or end up with a little flame at the tip if your acetylene valve is leaking. This is easy to remember. The fuel gas always comes first. You turn it on first and you turn it off first. Now while you're making the final adjustments, you can adjust the flame a little bigger or a little smaller depending on the situation, but you can't get too radical. If the flame is too small, it'll take forever to get the metal preheated and you may not have enough heat to sustain the cut. The flame may also pop out. If you try for too big a flame, you may not be able to adjust the preheat flames properly. But whatever the size, tip, or flame, always adjust it to a neutral flame. Also, when you push the oxygen cutting jet lever, you may have to readjust the flame a little bit. If the flame changes a lot, check to make sure that the main oxygen valve is open all the way. Check the oxygen pressure setting on the regulator and make sure there's enough oxygen left in the bottle. Now, when you're first lighting the torch, the soot that acetylene produces is like grease. Once you're familiar with what the flame should look like, you can add a little oxygen before you light the torch. Open the acetylene about an eighth of a turn and get a little oxygen. Then make your final adjustments. Adding a little oxygen before you light it just helps to eliminate all that soot from floating around. If you're using propane instead of acetylene, adjust the torch the same way. You won't get the soot and smoke, but keep the flame from jumping away from the tip. Then slowly add oxygen to get a neutral flame. Notice that there's a lot more preheat flame with a propane tip. Now, I've got a piece of 3 8 flat bar here, so let's try to make a cut. If you ever have to cut close to concrete or in the dirt, be careful. When concrete or stones get hot, they pop, sending pieces flying in every direction. Also, 
before you do any kind of torch cutting. You need to know where the sparks are going. Okay, let's give this a try. Looks like I got lucky on this one. So let's take a look at it and figure out how to do that. The cut is fairly straight and smooth and there isn't much slag on the bottom side. First of all, you need to take your time, relax, and make sure everything's right before you start. This was new metal so it was clean and I had a straight line for a guide. I can't tell you how many times someone has drawn a line for me to cut that was so crooked I had to ask them if they wanted it cut that crooked or if they wanted it cut straight. Give yourself a chance to make a straight cut by drawing a straight line. And when you sharpen your soapstone, try leaving one side flat so it rides right against the straight edge. Now, you want to rest your arm on the table or the work so you can be steady. You need to get comfortable. That's like the number one rule for welders. Get comfortable. Try holding the torch gently between your thumb and forefinger right at this point. Now, you can cut in either direction, but if you're right-handed, you'll find it's easier to cut from right to left, and if you're left-handed, it's opposite. Heat the edge of the metal till it's cherry red, but you don't want it to melt. Before you push the oxygen cutting jet lever, make sure you're right on the edge or even back away from the metal a little and move into it. If that oxygen cutting jet can't get all the way through, molten metal will come right back up and contaminate the tip or even hit you in the face. When you push the cutting jet lever, push it all the way in. Keep the preheat flame up off the metal a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch or about three millimeters and try not to move the torch head up and down. Have the torch nearly perpendicular to the metal and move with a steady, smooth progression across the cut. Ideally, you want to move as fast as you can and still have the oxygen cutting jet go all the way through. The slot made when cutting is called the kerf. The front edge is sort of half round and while you're cutting, you want to watch right here and keep this spot against the cut line. When you're done, let off the cutting jet lever and turn off the torch. Let's put this all together and watch it one more time. Now this really is simple, but I've seen people make some rough cuts, so let's take a look at a few things that might help you out. Probably the number one reason for not making a good cut is a dirty tip. Any contamination on the face or cutting jet orifice will cause the oxygen jet to swirl, slowing down the progress, widening the kerf, and gouging into the sides of the kerf. Keep some tip cleaners handy and use the file looking thing to dress up the face. Clean the preheat orifices so the flames will sharpen up and you absolutely need to keep the cutting jet orifice clean. In the long run, you'll save time by taking a few moments to keep your tip clean. And I clean the cutting jet orifice after every four or five cuts because it's easier to keep it clean than to let it get too messed up and have to fix it. You want the metal as clean as possible. Any impurities on the surface will take heat away from the cut, slowing down the progress. In a shop, most of the metal will be new, but when you start making repairs or modifications, use a wire brush to clean dirty or rusted metal 
and paint can be burned with a torch then brushed off. Check the bottom side too. Any contaminants on the bottom may stop the oxygen cutting jet from getting all the way through. If the preheat flames are adjusted too big or you have an oxidizing flame, the top edge of the kerf can burn and melt away. If there's not enough oxygen pressure, the cutting jet may not get all the way through. And too much oxygen pressure can cause the kerf to widen at the bottom. Now, with torch cutting like this, we're actually burning the metal. And slag is the oxides formed by this burning process. Ideally, the slag should blow through the cut. If the metal gets hot enough, the slag will stick to the bottom edge. You want the cut to progress smoothly. That's why you need a clean tip, clean metal, and the torch and regulators adjusted properly. When the progress slows down for any reason, the metal heats up and the slag will stick. Now, this happens to everybody. You can't always make a perfect cut. Generally, the slag comes off easily using a chipping hammer and hitting it back towards the edge. If you're not cutting all the way through, first, check to make sure nothing is on the bottom side of the metal. If that's okay, you may not have enough oxygen pressure or you're trying to move too fast. Instead of the slag blowing through, you can see it coming right back up in the curve, kind of making a mess of things. When this happens, you can't just back up and start over because that slag melts before the metal and you won't be able to get all the way through. One thing you can try is to back up to where the cut is good, preheat one edge of the kerf, and cut the metal right alongside of the first cut. You will end up with some grinding to clean it up, but you can get going again. Not cutting through takes some time to fix and you're way better off avoiding it. If the cut just stops while you're moving along, check the preheat flames to make sure you have enough heat to sustain the cut, but most likely you're moving too fast. As long as you are cutting all the way through, you can restart right where you stopped. There's probably a little slag on the bottom side where the cut stopped, so when you preheat again, make sure the metal gets plenty hot and always let off the cutting jet lever to preheat the metal. If that slag on the bottom side isn't hot enough, the cutting jet may not get through and it can gouge out the bottom of the curve. Now, when you're making long cuts, you can't make the whole cut in one shot. You'll have to stop and reposition yourself. You can restart right in the curve. If one piece is not going to be used, you can start on that edge, move up to the cut, and keep on going. On finished cuts that need to be polished out, you can cut away from the line a little, reposition yourself, and restart in the cutout. This way you can be sure not to leave gouges where you begin again. There's always a chance of gouging into the sides of the kerf when restarting, so try to keep the stops and starts to a minimum. Earlier, we made a straight cut on some 3 8 flat bar. Let's take a look at some other cutting situations. When you start trying to cut thicker metal, everything is a little more critical. It's not that it's any harder to cut, but rather that if you mess up, it's a whole lot more difficult to fix. Definitely use the right tip size and gas pressures, clean the metal, and have a good cut line. You want to have the torch head straight up and down in both directions. And sometimes I'll even have someone watch from this direction to make sure I don't tip the torch out and make the cut at an angle. You don't need to get the whole side red hot, just the top edge. Then rotate the tip back a little to catch the corner, push the cutting jet lever, rotate the tip straight up and down again, and start moving. This is inch and a quarter metal using a number one tip with five pounds acetylene and 40 pounds oxygen. You want to go slow enough so the cutting jet has time to go all the way through. Too slow is better than too fast. 
You might have some slag stick to the metal, but that's a whole lot better than losing the cut. The thicker the metal, the more you need to take your time and be ready. You'll be a lot happier with yourself if you do it right the first time. When you're cutting thinner gauge 